don't really know where to start with this video to be honest but welcome back as i'm sure you're all aware the majority of my videos are all upbeat chatty you know i take the mick out of myself and genuinely 99.9% .9 of the time that is how i am however i just wanted to actually take the time to talk about something really close to my heart and something that has shaped me and made me into the person that I am and you're probably going to see me talking with my hands the majority of the way through this video because to be honest I don't really know where to go with it and I don't really know where to start. I wasn't actually planning on filming anything and didn't want to however I woke up this morning and kind of felt like I should because it might help someone might not <laughs> so this is going to be a very different video very different video it's been 13 years since my dad passed away um i found this anniversary probably way harder or one of the harder ones out of all of them my friend put it really well the other day and said that it's not always the anniversaries it's you know it it's every other time that you miss them and every other time that you think about them that get you the most rather than the anniversaries and you know the big the big events like Christmas, New Year, birthdays. You tend to miss them more and it kind of takes you by surprise on the other days, the days that you least expect it. Yeah, I kind of didn't expect this one to hit me in a type of way. However, it did. And I'm just, I just want to be honest with you. Last year was the 12th year, obviously, that I lost him. And on that anniversary, I actually did a blog post, which I will link down below. And that was a big thing for me because I've never opened up or been vocal about grief or vocal about what I've been through. Just because like, it's not really me, although I kind of feel like I should really shout from the rooftop about it because... It's made me who I am. And he was the biggest, most important part of my life. So I should really shout about him. And the 12th year was probably the most significant year because I was 12 years old when I lost him. And when you think of a 12 year old now, obviously I'm a children's nurse. I see and treat children all the time. And you see a 12 year old and you think, wow, you're so young. Like you, you were so, so young. And you're a baby really in the grand scheme of your life however at the time i didn't think i didn't think i was i felt like i needed to be okay and i felt like i needed to be be strong and then this year was probably one of the harder ones because i've lived longer without him and then i did with him if that makes sense and I think about like all the things that I've done and all the things I've seen and the person I've become like these years and these 13 years have been huge in all of my family's life. All like my life completely has changed and I've done so much and there's so many things that I would absolutely love to tell him and I think that's the hardest is that you want just to be able to speak to that person even just once to know that they're there and to hear their voice and to feel that energy just for like just once you know i don't want to get upset <laughs> i'll tell you a little bit about my dad and kind of give you more of a backstory so my dad was absolutely the greatest the greatest greatest man ever and i'm so lucky and i always try and remind myself of this because I am so lucky and I don't want to seem like I don't appreciate that obviously you know I really do I appreciate the fact that I got to have him in my life and that is huge because a lot of people don't have that chance and he was amazing he was the life and soul he could literally light up any room with just his presence like i don't know how he did it um and his smile and his energy it just it was just something else he was funny he made everyone feel like 
you've known him for a lifetime you meet him and you felt like you knew him and he listened and he wanted to know you and yeah he just had some kind of he just had the biggest love for the world and love for people and that was amazing to see and amazing to live with my dad was diagnosed with parkinson's disease i think a few months before i was conceived um this is a huge huge impact on our family huge impact on my mum i can't even imagine the what they were feeling at the time but as he was such a strong person and just had he was just so strong and so passionate about life and kind of didn't let anything hold him back it didn't hold him back and i would never ever look at him and think of this disease i always looked at him and just was in awe of him very lucky to have like amazing amazing parents that taught me and shaped me into the person i am i really am many of you who may not know um Parkinson's disease is a degenerative disease. I'm going to read a little bit from my blog when I say this because I kind of worded it quite well. So Parkinson's disease, many people know this as the distinctive tremor, but there's so much more than just a tremor. It really is. Um, all I knew at the time was that his signals the signals his brain sent out didn't get to where they were supposed to get and that's how my mum kind of described it to me and that's how like it made sense to me however obviously it was a lot more complex than that and knowing now what I know um I appreciate it a lot more and I appreciate that probably the majority of days were of a struggle so yeah it's a progressive disease I kind of never expected when I was young growing up with that that it would ever take his life or lead to something that would end his life I never anticipated that I mean I'm very I'm also very thankful in a way because originally it meant that he then had to work from home so he was always around and that was amazing like I always had him and I never knew anything different I would always go into his office and take him sweets and take him drinks and always be there with him and he'd always watch neighbours with me every day because I was an old woman trapped in a child's body <laughs> who loved neighbours. Um, he was always present and he was always there. And obviously for a while I didn't notice the effects of the disease until I got older, had a slight more understanding and saw what it did. He was still the most amazing dad. He was always there, um, always tried his absolute best, always spent time with me. It didn't stop him being a dad and it didn't define him at all in any way obviously in the later years it got a lot harder and absolutely hats off to my mum for being the most amazing woman for caring for him for supporting him for supporting us um you you're amazing i think the thing i remember most about growing up with the disease was that I thought I could fix him. I thought that if I prayed enough, um, if I pretended to be a nurse, um, if I put nappy cream on his feet, <laughs> I would make him better. I always thought that he would get better. Regardless of all of that, my favourite memories will always be with him, um, as a family mainly. Um, my dad was Welsh, he used to go on trips to Swansea every year, which is where he's from. And that car journeys would be my absolute favourite with my sister and my mum. We were such a close, close family and I'm so thankful for those times because Hey. Sorry. They were my best friends. I genuinely don't think that anyone can ever prepare you for loss and um, ever prepare you for how grief makes you feel. And I don't want this to be like a negative video because I really, really don't. Um, I just want 
it to be something that makes someone feel like actually I'm not alone you know I'm not the only person that goes through this I'm 13 years down the line and I'm still learning and I'm still growing and I think last year when I went traveling was like the biggest year for my grief because I've always boxed it in but last year everything kind of slapped me in the face and it was like a massive year for grieving as well as seeing because I was traveling and I was taken away from all the distractions and all the normality of the world and that's when I felt he was most there and that I had to really learn. When I was little I remember being offered like a, a grief counsellor and we had family support but um, I don't think really I realised how much I needed that. I never had it, I never actually did it but I think it would have been absolutely huge for me and it's so important, it really is and therapy is not a negative thing, it isn't. It's okay to need help and it's okay to talk through your feelings because I didn't know what was going on and I didn't know how to process these abnormal feelings that I was feeling. I felt lost. I used to have the worst anxiety, like very bad anxiety. I think it's probably a lot to do with that and grief, obviously losing someone so young. I used to wake myself up in the night or not be able to sleep, but crying, crying uncontrollably. Not really understanding why I was feeling like this. So I, I urge people to like get help and speak to someone if you need to. Like it's not a negative thing. It's not a bad thing. You're not weak for doing it. We all need someone to talk to every so often and that's okay. So yeah, I'm still learning and I'm still growing and grief is ever changing. It doesn't just go away. You're just like a new version of yourself, you know, it gets easier, it gets more manageable, um, and it becomes a part of you, and it doesn't have to be a negative part, it, it doesn't have to be. That person will always be with you, even if you can't physically see them. Life does go on, um, and it will, it will get better. Yes, it will take some time, and yes you will have your ups and downs and it will be like a whirlwind of emotions but you're going to be okay so for anyone who's struggling just know that you are going to be okay i am so grateful i've said it already i'm so grateful for the years i spent with my dad he was the best and yes i'd love to talk to him again and yes, I'd love to see him again, but I also know that eventually I will and that I feel like the luckiest girl to ever because I had him and because I had a family that was so close and have so many memories. <sighs> Before I start crying again, <laughs> I'm going to... I'm probably going to round off now. I think I've kind of said all I need to say. But I just want to round off with this. I'm just say, like, if you're struggling with anything, with loss, um, you're not alone. And it will be okay. Some days you won't even think about it. And then the next day you'll feel bad for not thinking about it. There's no straight path with grief. There's no quick fix. Although you may want that, you be you have to be thankful for the process. I'm going to leave some links down below on people that you can speak to. Please reach out to me on it on social media. Also, if you want to talk, or if you know a child that's suffering with grief and you want to talk about the whole child grief side, I'm here to help. And I will leave my blog post in the description box down below so if you want to hear more please take your time to read it so yeah thank you for watching guys i'm sorry for crying <laughs> and to my dad wherever you are thank you thank you thank you for making me the person that i am for the memories for the smiles for being 
the light of our family's life. I wouldn't change any time I had with you for the world. Although I would want it to be longer. Can't have everything. <sighs> Thank you everyone. I'll see you next week and I won't cry.